All right, this is a lesson in 2.10, and it's on tangent line approximation. And we're also going to talk about elasticity. Now, before you watch this, you will want to um, print off the 2.9 through 2.11 notes and just fill those in um, as you watch it. So the first part is the uh, tangent line approximation um, formula on how you approximate the value of f of x using the tangent line approximation. Um, so what's going on here, and number two is a diagram for you to fill in, is um, we have our x-axis here with some value a and some value x. And we need to assume that these are reasonably close to each other. So we draw a curve, and we're going to suppose that we know the value of f of a. And we can also use calculus to find the derivative and then get the tangent line equation at f of a. All right, so what the um, tangent line approximation does is if we wanted to find the value of f of x, so here's f of x, and perhaps, um, you know, we just didn't have enough information, because um, we're talking about applied things here, and applied stuff isn't always a nice, neat function. If you had a nice, neat function, you would just plug in x to the function and you would get the value. But this would be used in, in um, situations where finding f of x would be difficult um, or not really possible. So what we do is we say, okay, we have our tangent line, and I'm going to fix this line a little bit here. Since f of a and f of x are quite close to each other, you know, there's only this small gap here. then the value of the, um, the xy value here on the tangent line is going to be close to f of x. So we can say that y is approximately f of x, y being the y value on our tangent line. <clears throat> so what we're doing is we're going to use, oh, cap blocks is on, uh, use the tangent line to approximate a point on a curve. And we get a formula for this. That formula is f of x is approximately the value of f of a plus the derivative of f of a times x minus a. All right, so let's see how we use it. I'll give an example 3a. And uh, let me get my typing out here. Check. Let's try this again. There we go. Um, suppose we know g of 20 equals 5. <clears throat> 
and g prime of 20 equals 1.4. We want to approximate what g of 23 is and g of 18. That's fairly straightforward. You're going to use the formula that I gave you earlier, f of x is approximately f of a plus the derivative of f of a times x minus a. So that means that f of 23 is approximately 5 plus 1.4 times 23 minus 20, which is 9.2. And f of 18 is approximately 5 plus 1.4. So we're just plugging in the values that were given to us in the formula. And now it's 18 minus 20, which is 2.2. We want to note here that this procedure is going to work best for values that are close to the one that we know. So finding f of 20.3, we can be more confident than, uh, on than finding, say, f of 50. Because, um, you know, a graph can change a lot the further you get away from a point. If you want to understand more on um, how this formula comes about and how it works, then feel free to come see me in office hours. All right, we have another, it's a little more complex, because um, this time, so this is a example B, they're giving us a function, that's a terrible F, okay. Let's fix that. And the function is the cube root of negative 108x cubed plus 324. And what they do, or what they're asking us to do is to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function at x equals 1. All right, well, <clears throat> since they didn't give us um, a point this time, we're, we have more work to do. As usual, we want to start by finding the derivative. So, of course, the Q root would be the same to the one-third power. So it's one-third of negative 108x cubed plus 324 to the negative 2 thirds and we need to use a chain rule here because the inside um, derivative is something other than 1 so we get negative 324 uh, x squared and we take the derivative of the inside if we plug 1 into this, we get negative 3. We also need to know what f of 1 is. So that's the cube root of negative 108 times x cubed plus 324. Well, 1 cubed is just 1. So we're just looking at the cube root of 108 plus 320, negative 108 plus 324. So that's 216. And then if you go to math, option 4, you can get the cube root, put in cube root of 216, and we get 6. So f of 1 is 6. Oops. 
squishing this up a little bit so I can write, finish writing. All right, so one six is a point on our graph. <clears throat> and um, we're not trying to predict a nearby point. Um, this time we're trying to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of this function. So we have the slope, uh, and we're going to call this line L because we're doing tangent line approximations. So, so far um, we know that we have negative 3x plus b. And now that we have a point 1, 6, we can plug that in. And we can see that our b is 9. So our tangent line is negative 3x plus 9. So if we were going to try to find a value um, close to 1, let's say we wanted to find what f of 1.1, what is that approximately equal to? Er, wait. Sorry. Let's plug it into our the function we just found. L of 1.1 is negative 3 times 1.1 1 .1 plus 9, which equals 5.7. Um, so we have all the tools now that we might need. Um, to approximate the value of 1.1. <clears throat> and another thing uh, that you'll see in the homework, this keeps getting smaller and smaller, is it'll ask you to find the error. Um, and when we're talking about error, we want the absolute value in the, equa in the um, error equation would be L of X minus F of X. So that's 5.7 minus 5.649. I can barely fit that in here. Let me squish it a little bit. And that is equal to 0 0.05115. So that should um, get you through the homework on 2.10 for linear approximations. All right, the next part of 2.10 is elasticity. So at the top of page, five in your notes, elasticity of demand is the definition and formula. But I'm going to give you a new formula to use. That's e of x is equal to x times d prime of x, where d is the, de the demand function, over d of x. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk a little bit about elasticity of demand. Um, give me just a second here. You probably have heard it come up in your, your business classes before, but basically we want to know what happens if we were to raise prices. And the demand function is a decreasing function, so when price increases, the quantity demand goes down. Um, but what about revenue? So when price increases, revenue could go down because the demand dropped so much, or the revenue could go up because demand didn't drop very much. Um, and demand, uh, the elasticity of demand is a normalized function, which means that particular prices and quantities don't matter and everything is treated as a percent change. Um, 
And the reason why we talk about it here is because it involves a derivative. So um, once you, basically you're just using this formula and then interpreting it. If your elasticity of demand is less than one, oh, I forgot something important here. Put the absolute value around your um, elasticity of demand function. Um, because we, since the demand function is uh, decreasing, your derivative is going to be negative. So we want to make sure um, to actually interpret it, we just want to use the absolute value to uh, <clears throat> make it positive. Um, all right, what was I saying? All right, so if the um, elasticity of demand is less than one, we say demand is inelastic. Um, in which case we can raise the prices because it's going to increase the revenue. If the elasticity of demand is greater than one, we say it's elastic. In this case, raising prices decreases revenue. If the elasticity of demand happens to be one, it's unitary. Um, e equals one at critical points of the revenue function. An interpretation of elasticity, if the price increases by 1%, the demand will increase by E%. Percent. So let's look at an example. We have D of P equal to the square root of 375 minus 4P. We want to find the elasticity of demand at a price of $45. All right, so using the formula above, E of P is the absolute value of the price, which is 45, um, times the derivative of price, D prime of 45, all over D of 45. So you can see that in order to use this uh, formula, we have some work to do. Let's start by finding the derivative. Undo. Oh, that doesn't work. Okay. Um, D prime of P. Well, remember square root would mean to the one half, so we'd get one half, 375 minus 4P, and since the derivative of the inside is not just one, we need to use the chain rule multiplied by its derivative, which is negative four. And then if you plug um, 45 into that, you get negative 1.4322. The other piece we needed was d of p. Oh, I don't want to write there because that's where I'm going to put the rest of that. Um, so D of 45. And D of 45 happens to be 13.96. Uh, so we have 45 times point 0.1, well, negative 0.14322, but the negative won't matter because we're going to take the absolute value over 13.96 and when all is said and done you get 0.4617 which is definitely less than one. So we would say that this one is um, inelastic and it's okay to raise prices because um, Revenue will still increase. We're given that D of P is a negative 2P plus 246. Real basic equation. P is 94. All right, let's start with D of 94. That happens to be 58. D prime of P is just negative 2, so D prime of, neg of 94 is, is negative 2, because that's a constant function. So putting this all together, E 94 
is going to be 94 times negative 2 all over 58. And what you get with that is 3.241, which is definitely larger than 1. So this one is elastic, and you don't want to raise prices. There's one more um, question that you'll see in your homework, and that is, um, at what price do you have unit elasticity? So let me type that in here. <clears throat> and to find that, what we do, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're going to take our our last oh get my pen our elasticity um, of demand function which is p um, times d prime of p all over d of p except let's put in what those values actually are now we're trying to find at what price so we want to leave p as p but we know that d prime is negative 2 and that d of p is negative 2, p plus 246. So we're going to take this function and we're going to set it equal to 1. All right, so um, what we have is negative 2p over negative 2p plus 246 equals 1. And we're going to drop the absolute value here because all that would change would, um, it would you have one set equal to 1, one to negative 1, but we don't want the one equal to negative 1. Um, we just want positive 1. And then if you multiply both sides by negative 2p plus 246, you would get negative 2p equals negative 2p plus 246. Add the 2p over and we get 0 equals 246. Well, 0 doesn't actually equal um, 246. So there's no solution to this one. And I misspoke a little earlier. We are going to use um, the absolute value. So its absolute value of this here, um, our elasticity equals 1. So one equation is setting it equal to 1, the other one is setting it equal to negative 1. What I meant was we were going to drop it for that one and just set it equal to 1. But this one, um, and that's just a rule that you would have learned back in algebra that when you have absolute value, uh, of a function equals a value, you set, you make two equations out of it. So anyway, we do the same thing here. We're going to multiply both sides by the negative 2p uh, plus 246, and we get negative 2p equals now positive 2p minus 246. And then if we subtract the 2p on both sides, we get negative 4p equals negative 246. And when you divide, you actually get 61.5. So at 61.5, you're going to get that unit elasticity. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for 2.10. So at this point, um, you should be able to handle the homework problems. There's only seven of them.